Hey guys, Anthony 4 before Diesel from the Prado Hospital, specialising on Prados in Australia. They're called Prados LC120, LC150 Toyota Land Cruiser. We've got a couple of different sets of brand new, genuine front lower control arms is what they are. We're going to quickly go through. You've, for the regular viewers, you've probably seen these on the vehicle. You've seen the split bushes. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time, you know, the usual 5 to 10 minutes, hopefully. The plan's 5 to 10 minutes. I can't see this one going for any longer than that. Just got, I've got a drink here because I've been going flat stick. I've just received an order, the ones on the left for a 120 Prado. They're about to go in a vehicle, so I had to knock off this video before we put them in the car. The ones on the right happen to be on the shelf waiting for the next vehicle. 150 Prado, LC 150. Mm. So this is the deal, right? Um, it's not a big deal, to be quite honest. It's not a big deal. And because I'm doing all these videos and showing people how to look after the best vehicles, some people think, ah, oh, you know, the Toyotas aren't what they used to be and whatever. No, we, you got it all wrong. We're showing you all the problems so that people can avoid them, and it's probably one in a thousand or that sort of thing. Or it's normal wear and tear. Or if you looked at another make or model, it's going to be a lot worse a lot sooner. So rest assured, Toyotas, I wouldn't say they're not what they used to be at all. I'd say they're better than ever. There's some things to do with emissions that obviously cause problems, and there's uh, obviously maintenance issues that most everyday um, mechanics, if you like to call them, they don't know about to do the right maintenance, but then not many people do, including people that should know better. But anyway, that's another story. We're talking lower control arms here. If you want the right information, just subscribe and turn the bell on now so you don't miss out on the right information to look after your vehicle, to have it looked after. Be careful where you go. So on the left is the 120 Prado, LC120. On the right's the 150. These are for a GXL. Note that if you've got a VX or a Kakadu, the arms are different because they've got KDSS and things Things are different. Let's not go into that too much. So, the deal is, once you get, I've got to be honest, normally it's around the 250,000 Ks on average. The bushes, that's the bushes that are like in here, right? Those, and obviously you can see there's, you know, there's eight in total in the picture. All of those from the twisting, because they're mounted at this point here, that's a crush tube and the bolt's done up tight. And this arm, it moves up and down, right? and therefore it's twisting here and rubber bushes can only twist to be quite honest i've forgotten if it's 30 percent or 30 30 degrees or 30 percent whatever it is anyway but it's not so much about the twisting because these arms don't really twist that much and go outside that range the biggest issue we see is is when the the bolt and i've explained this in another video so you should watch all the other videos we might have uh, i don't know if we've got a playlist on those i've got a bag of what i want to show you as well these are the little adjusters there you go I've got a couple of sets for each arm, whatever, for when they're seized in there, right? So they basically go in the holes in the bush there, right? You can see, you know, see that hole there? Um, and what happens, you know, rust and corrosion and dirt. No fault of any manufacturing or the manufacturer. Maybe they could have put grease on them. Look, that may have attracted more dirt and stuff and worn out anyway. I don't know whether it would help or not. It probably would. We do. We put anti-seize or grease or whatever we feel like on the day in there. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens with that. But, you know, they put them in dry. Maybe there's a reason for that. So maybe we've done the wrong thing. So let us know in the comments. But what happens is they get seized in there or the bolts get seized in there, whatever it is. And then when someone does a wheel on it, those on the end of those little bolts there, right, there's a, a, a cam sort of thing. And it, that is what changes the position of the arm on the vehicle to adjust the wheel on. But what it's doing, if it's seized on the inside of that bush there, it's twisting the rubber and then they lock it up and it's permanently twisted then you've got your bouncing over speed humps or off-road down the beach sand dunes whatever you're doing and that constant and depending how you drive so how you drive is going to be the biggest factor on how long your front lower control arm bushes last on any vehicle bushes on any vehicle you race around on the gas on the brakes around the corners hit the speed humps hit the potholes don't take any care to avoid anything your bushes are going to have a much shorter life than someone that really looks at if you've got the right suspension it's you know you've got all this weight there old flog suspension with bull bars and whatever it's bouncing around like crazy hitting the bump stops it's going all the way up as well <coughs> excuse me up down and around all over the joint maximum wear and tear sorry i got a bit of a tickle in the throat i'm probably talking a bit too fast so let's just dial it down a bit <coughs> so i'm talking fast because some people are always in a hurry so i've got to spit it out quicker and get to the point well haven't i made the point the whole way so stick around because we've got about another five minutes to go i reckon estimate so bouncing around now if you've got um 
heavy duty suspension and good valving, shocks and struts that aren't worn out. So you've got a good firm ride there, handles well, but you've also got control. The valving of the shocker or the strut. <coughs> There's that C19 again, I swear I got a tickle in the throat. I could stop the video, but we're just gonna roll with it, right? Unless it gets really, really bad. If you've got a nice firm control, you're not getting as much flex in those rubber bushes, so they're gonna last longer. On average, we see it at about 250,000 cases where you may need to replace those bushes or arms, however you go about it. We'll get to that part in a minute. And if these arms are different and what's different about them and all that sort of thing. Um, but if you look after them really well, we've seen them at higher Ks that are in better condition and we've seen them at low Ks that are absolutely trashed. You know what I mean? But averages are <coughs> about the two, uh, look, you know, by, even by 100,000, we can see the split starting on some vehicles. It all depends how you drive, what suspension you've got. Hope you get that part of the picture without going into too much detail. Just think about it. Have a think about it. Use that common sense. Use that common sense on everything in life. Have a think about it, right? So that's what we see. Now, as far as replacement goes, you've got lots of options for aftermarket, genuine, whatever. The genuine bushes, ballpark, they're about 100 bucks each. So one, two, three, 400 bucks to get those, four or 500 to get a set. Then you've got labor. They can be stuck in those arms there quite badly. And sometimes you can bend the arm, right? The arms can get bent in or out, trying to press those in and out. And that can cause problems because if you bend, see where that's meant to be right there, right? If, you, if it's like that, it's not gonna fit in the car. If it's in like that, it might fit in the car, but what can happen is there's not much holding those bushes in. So when you put the new ones in, there's only, a, it's an interference fit, and there's only about 10 mil of the end of the new bush. Long story short, the bushes can come out, arms can get bent, you're paying late, it's a pain, you know what? You can't, the ball joints we don't see a problem with, that's over here, these things, ball joints on the end. You can't buy them separately unless something's changed. You can get aftermarket separately, but you know we're like genuine, we don't see any problems. And I'll sort of go, yeah, these arms are expensive, but for the fact that you only replace them out every 150,000 Ks, um, it's just replace the whole arm, you're gonna save on labor, you'll spend a little bit more on the arm. At the end of the day, we don't keep these in stock usually. I'm starting to get to the point where I might keep one set of each on the shelf, so I'm probably gonna do that. So if you want these, plan well in advance. We can order them in, we'll get them a bit cheaper for you than what you're gonna get them at your local dealer. And then what we can do is, we can save you some money, you know, not a big deal, because we've got to send them and they're heavy and all that sort of thing. So you're gonna be looking around about 17, 1800 bucks a pair um, on the, to the east coast of Australia, if you know what I mean. If we send them to the west coast, it's gonna to be towards the 18 probably. Again, somewhere near there. But take care of them. We, when I'm not here to try and sell your arms, I'm just answering the question because people have asked. Now what's different? The bushes are different, okay? I haven't measured every uh, everything on the arm to see what's different, but I can tell you the bushes are different. The whole size in the middle, definitely different. The arms are different as well because the opening here, see that opening where the, uh, where the shock or straights the coil over goes in, on the one on the right, the 150 Prado, it's a little bit wider. It's about one or two millimeters wider there than it is there. So that's a couple of your differences. So you do need to use LC120s on the LC120, LC150 on the LC150. Uh, what other precautions? Not much really. So what you can do, as I said, one of the biggest things really is from wheel alignments because those bolts, they haven't been touched for years, so they become C's, those adjusters there that go in the end of that I've demonstrated in another video, so I'm literally gonna be only another minute or two and we're done. What you wanna do if you're gonna get a wheel on it, right? Now, I'm not saying because you got a lift or because you got this out or the other, you gotta get a wheel on it. I say if the tires are wearing good and the car drives well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, don't let anyone touch it. That's my thing, right? It is hard to find a good wheel on it. And anyone that thinks they found a good wheel on it, and doesn't mean I'm approving it, but put it in the comments, say this is where I go, they're really good. Put your reasons why, put a bit of a story there for the people that want to read the story and they want to go there, they might give them a go, including myself maybe. Um, so around Melbourne or Perth or Brisbane, anywhere in Australia, doesn't matter where you are, please tell us about if you think you've got a good wheel on it. Don't need to tell us about the bad ones, we know, it'd be a long list, okay? So, my point is, before you go for the wheel alignment, what you do is, mark everything so it's not gonna move, Loosen them off and make and get your spanner on there and twist those things and make sure they're all twisting, moving, that sort of thing before you go for the wheel on it. Because if it's not and they don't do that and they probably won't, then they're twisting the bush, they're gonna wreck it. 
Now you need to free it up, spray it, soak it, heat it, tap it. Sometimes you can get those out of the arms without cutting it off. Usually, you know, you'll be able to free them up or tap, tap back and forward, get them out, clean them up, put some grease and you can use them again. If you have problems, then you're probably gonna have to cut them out, which means then you're gonna have to get your bushes done. And so you're gonna need these arms. So you go check it all out first. If it's looking like this is not gonna end well and they look pretty average anyway, order some new arms or bushes, whatever you're gonna do, plan for plan B. And uh, that's it. So that's how we roll. That's what we recommend. You loosen those up, lube them up before you take it for a wheel on it. And they're going to finalize, you know, they're going to be able to adjust it without twisting the bush and everything's hopefully going to be in the right spot and happy days. Hopefully that's helped. There's some information for you. The only way we do it is replacing the whole arm um, and bada bing, that's it. We don't, I don't really want to send them, but I'm just trying to help save you some bucks because sometimes they're about a thousand bucks each. Uh, <coughs> hopefully, once we buy a few of them and the, the pricing steadies off a bit because the price is up and down a bit, hopefully we can get the price down a bit and save you some money. Obviously, if you're in Melbourne and you want to pick them up, it's going to save you a fair bit of money. Um, you know, pick them up, pay cash, and no, you'll save on the you know because we don't have the FBOS machine here, and we don't, and you'll save on the freight as well because they're heavy. We're not sending them. You come to me, Melbourne, pick them up. I can get them in for you. You need to allow a few weeks at least, even longer, if we're away on a trip. Remember that one Mondays from 7:30 a.m. for all the parts guys. I'm out of here. Sorry, it took a bit longer than I thought, but it's all info. I know everybody loves it. Thumbs up if you loved it and subscribe bell on, I'm out of here. See ya.